Meeting call to order, 515. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, may I have roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Present. Commissioner Bruin? Present. Commissioner Clark? Here. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Flores? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner Gonzalez? Absent. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Saragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, this is uh, something new for our board. Uh, we're going to uh, have an uh, invocation led by Mr. Tom Turner. Uh, please, uh, if you want us to remain seated, bow, stand, it's up to you. Dear God, our eternal Father in heaven, we are grateful for the wonderful weather we've enjoyed lately and we are grateful for the opportunity to be gathered together and to conduct this business we ask for thy blessing and direction in the conduction of this business that we will do so with clarity of thought and with love and temperance and compassion we ask for thy blessing on us and our families and everyone within Kern County. And these things we pray in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. Our Commissioner McKibben will be leading us. <coughs> please follow me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Move, moving on to number, item number four. We don't have no video. Do we have any video conference? We no. do not. Okay, moving on to item number five, approval of minutes uh, for August 21, 2024. Uh, do we have any public comments regarding the, the minutes? Seeing none. Uh, co any commissioner questions or comments? Seeing none, do I have a motion for approval? Motion. Is that Clark? Second for us. Motion by Commissioner Clark, second by Commissioner Flores. Madam Clerk, may I have roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item number six, uh, public comment. The, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter that's not in the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Do we have anybody for public comment, Madam Clerk? No. None. Okay, moving uh, for number seven. We don't have no determination proceedings. Moving up to number eight, notice of public hearing, 1835. Uh, City of McFarland annexation number 19. This proposal is to annex approximately 120 acres of land consisting of four parcels located west of Garzoli Avenue, south of per uh, Perkins Avenue, north of Sherwood Avenue, and east of Stradley Avenue. This annexation was uh, initiated uh, by the city and the landowner's request for the purpose of multi-use development. The surrounding properties are agriculture and open ground. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested the notice hearing and Proceed hearing to be waived. Uh, Mr. Knox. This would typically be a simple annexation. The proposed area is within the city's sphere of influence. It has 100% consent, and the city has agreed to indemnify LAFCO. A little unusual is the city's acceptance of administering the Williamson Act contract, but we have done that before with other cities. Everything lined up until we received a call last week from an adjacent landowner in the southwest corner of the annexation. After answering some questions, it became clear that the landowner wanted to be annexed. This would not be unusual, except the landowner happens to be the McFarland's uh, plan director's mother. <laughs> Sorry, Bree. That's just too ironic. 
Uh, upon further investigation, city staff revealed that there are six properties within the south, southeast quarter section and all wanted to be annexed, but were told by the developer that they would be required to pay half of the cost. While I understand the developer's desire to, to lower costs, the influence his development will have on these properties during construction and increased traffic long-term and other impacts should be considered when asking others to financially participate. Therefore, I'm changing my recommendation to con conditionally approve the annexation with the inclusion of these six additional properties, which uh, Mr. Rice is gonna put up on the screen here. These six are in the southeast corner of that, that uh, section of land. Um, uh, my recommendation is conditionally approve the annexation with the inclusion of these six additional properties and with full width of the road along Sherwood Avenue. There has to be 100% consent of all property owners and all LAFCO and county processes will need to be completed with these properties included. We have consulted with city staff and they are supported by the modification of the proposal and will provide a revised map and legal description. Therefore, is my recommendation that the commission should review and consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. It's further recommended that the commission approve proceeding 1835, city of McFarland annexation number 19, as modified by the executive officer to include parcels 060-42013, 16, 17, 18, 23, and 24, along with, with the full width of Sherwood Avenue on the south side of the proposed annexation, 100% consent of all property owners, and completion of all LAFCO and county ap uh, application processes. We have notice, hearing, and protest hearing as subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do, uh, do I have any public comment regarding this annexation? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the commission, Paul Saldana, Community Development Director for the City of McFarland. Uh, we did uh, receive uh, or have a conversation with uh, LAFCO staff on uh, Friday of last week uh, prior to receiving the revised conditions uh, today. Uh, in the course of that time, we have consulted with the uh, property owners. We uh, did receive um, at least 100% verbal commitment. Uh, we will enter into the record uh, this evening uh, signed consent forms from over half of the property owners in the uh, area that is uh, recommended from uh, from commission staff. I would also um, acknowledge that we're going to enter into the record um, previously sent correspondence from the um, McFarland School District, the McFarland Recreation and Park District, both supporting uh, the annexation. And we're also entering into the record uh, letters of intent uh, regarding the development that's proposed on the project uh, from Darnell Development and Rick a Amarine. Uh, I know the applicant or the property owner, the primary property owner that has initiated this annexation is also here available to address any uh, questions or comments that you may have. On behalf of the city, I would say that we would, um, um, we're uh, moving forward with the, uh, the recommendation and we'll, we'll accept that and we'll, uh, uh, move to uh, make sure all these conditions are met prior to the completion of the uh, annexation process. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, regarding the application itself. Okay. Commissioners, do we have any questions, uh, concerns for, go ahead, Mr. Saragosa. Um, thank you for that update, uh, Mr. Saldonia. That's good to hear. Um, is there going to be any discussion on revising your SQL document? Or does your current SQL document uh, more or less cover the proposed revision? Uh, the current SQL document was based off of the uh, the general plan uh, EIR that that included the property that is being proposed in there, and so the the uh, environmental document would uh, leans heavily on the the um, recommendations and the um, conditions within the general plan, and so those would certainly be. Uh, included in that. Again, each development that comes into it will have to undergo its own SQL process uh, as well, and so uh, there will be subsequent SQL processes um, as the development um, takes shape. But from a, from a planning standpoint, those, uh, uh, those have been done. And we understand that of those six additional properties, all of them have been developed. There's no plans to develop them any further. Okay. 
that's yeah. that's good to know. Uh, last question is more of a administrative thing. Um, right now, as it stands, Sherwood Sherwood Avenue is a county road, and now it's going to be. A portion of that, the full width, will be annexed to the city of McFarland. Is that my understanding? Uh, that, that's correct, because uh, now that the annexation is extending uh, south, uh, south uh, all the way to Sherwood Avenue, then the city would accept the responsibility for um, both sides of Sherwood Avenue uh, all the way to the extent of the western boundary of the, of the annexation. Is there any proposed improvements like street lighting or signage or anything? There are no street? current proposed improvements, but uh, any proposed development, including the development that's uh, further to the north um, that would access Sherwood, uh, certainly would be required to entertain any development requirements as part of their overall plan. Thank you. It, it's LAFCO's policy to annex the full width of any road adjacent to an annexation. Thank you, Mr. Saragosa. Ms. Fowler? Uh, another question for you. Do you intend to get signed consent from the remaining homeowners in that area? Yes, we met with the, uh, with the two remaining um, uh, owners that we did not receive uh, signed consent forms, and they have those forms, and they're processing those through their, their process, so we hope to have them by the end of the week. I have a question through the Go chair. Go um, Mr. Clark. Impact fees uh, were mentioned earlier or some type of fee structure. Um, I'm assuming the, the uh, property owners are aware of the impact fees that potentially could come, come up in the future? That is, that is correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, concerns for Mr. Saldana? Seeing none. Okay, thank you, Mr. Saldana. Any other public comment? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aaron Resendez. I'm the superintendent for the McFarland Unified School District. Uh, here just to reiterate the support that you've already heard from the city of McFarland and the homeowners. The McFarland Unified School District uh, serves not just the city of McFarland, but the surrounding areas extending north to uh, all the way to Standard School District, uh, all the way to Wasco uh, Unified School District, not Unified, I'm sorry, Elementary School District, High School District, all the way to 65 and then uh, abutting to Delano. So the school district encompasses this entire area. We're in complete support. If you're familiar with the circumstances that uh, have developed over the last few years in McFarland, you'll know that this is characterized by momentum. Uh, this is the, uh, frankly, the most positive momentum that we have seen from the school district on behalf of the city working with private and uh, other state agencies for the development and uh, growth of our area. We know the impact that that has on the students that we serve, their families, uh, in particular the commercial growth, but also when it comes to the schools that we're able to provide for, for our kids in our community in order for McFarland to be able to go out for bonding, uh, we need to have the bonding capacity. And the bonding capacity is based on the valuation. The, Frankly, the base or the tax base needs to grow in order for us to be able to access that type of those types of funds. And so we are in complete support, uh, have been in, in uh, very uh, constant and ongoing communication with the city of McFarland. We appreciate the landowner who very early on made contact with the school district and included us in those conversations. That certainly was a very refreshing uh, new item that usually we're we're left to last, and when uh, developments come in, and this landowner in particular made contact with us, and we appreciated that and made us part of the process. So again, on behalf of the McFarland Unified School District and the Board of Trustees, we're in full support of this annexation, Annexation 19 for McFarland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Resendez. Uh, anyone else for public comment regarding this item? Good evening. Neil Mindron with Millicent's Farming. I just want to say that we've been working side by side with the city on this annexation now for almost two years. So we put together a good team. We have a single family builder that's present. We have our engineer and we have a gentleman right here that's gonna be uh, coming in for, with our grocery store. So if I can introduce them, um, we appreciate it. But Joe, do you wanna speak? Yes. Yeah, please. Hello.
Hello, my name is Joseph Shoup. I'm coming out of Visalia, California. I represent TC James Holmes and Darnell Development. Uh, we'll be the ones that are prospectively looking into do the development and the home building for, uh, I'm not even sure the name of the neighborhood, but for Annexation 19. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for the Well, you want me to answer that or city manager? <laughs> I can answer it, but I think uh, I'll sit back on this one. I, I was going to let uh, I was going to let Neil answer that one, but uh, <laughs> uh, so in, in terms of uh, uh, public safety, there's there's two considerations here. Uh, the first is that we do have um, uh, general impact fees that are collected on the development that occur uh, with that. We'll also be evaluating. Uh, as, as we do with all development, uh, the impact that that would have in terms of the level of service and make adjustments to our force um, uh, respectfully. And in addition to that, the city is also, um, actually we're, we, we've been out to bid uh, now and we're in the design of a new uh, police headquarters um, and a police office so, so that way we can um, keep up with the growth that is occurring in the community. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Uh, questions? Good evening. Um, I'm Alan Williams. I'm with uh, AW Engineering. We are a civil surveying engineering, uh, civil engineering surveying company out of Basalia, California. And uh, we represent a lot of the private developers in the area, such as D.R. Horton, Lennar, San Joaquin Homes, uh, Darnell Development. And we are uh, excited about being part of this development. How many units are How many units are proposed? Uh, uh, for the hundred acre, it's a hundred lots for the first phase. Uh, this is 120 acres. That's a mixed use, and it's got commercial frontage along with residential. So. I don't think 390, 390 total. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But it's oh. in a phase development. So 100 is the first well, phase. We need all the units we can in the county. So. <laughs> <laughs> well. I might disagree. I think we need more commercial. But we, could, we, could, we could talk about that later with some local funding. But anyways, uh, what the, uh, any questions for concerns? No? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Anyone else regarding before I turn it around? Good evening. Uh, my name is Alex Hussain, and I'm a grocer and also a pharmacy uh, owner. And uh, we're going to be working with this development and uh, bringing in a full line grocery store, which hopefully is going to satisfy the, the, all the new development. And uh, we also uh, operate right here. We're local. We operate uh, in more than six cities in, you know, within the valley, you know, from uh, Laws Hills, Shafter, Wasco. And we have a new also development here in, uh, you know, if you know, the old Hillcrest Center where it used to be Young's Market. We're going to be developing that probably in the next uh, six months. we got a market going there. So uh, I think uh, this will be a great project. And we, I'm also, as a pharmacist, I operate uh, more than 11 pharmacies in Kern, uh, part in Kern County and uh, Tulare with Express Pharmacy and also Shafter Medical Pharmacy. We're located in Bakersfield, uh, you know, from Stockdale to Meacham to Callaway, uh, Wasco, Shafter, and Hanford. So... We, uh, we look forward to, and, uh, you know, we're going to give it our full support and see, you know, do everything that we can do to satisfy this project and make it happen. Thank you. And I thought I wore a lot of hats. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate I, it. Thank I you. Do, I have a question. Uh, sure. Saul? Yes, yeah, thank Mr. Sugar. Sure. Uh, what was your name again? Alex Hussein. Alex, uh, thank you for that update. Uh, I wanted to say uh, hats off to the developer. Um, a lot of times when a development goes in, there's a school, but there's no fresh food, no grocery. Oh, we're going to make that And happen. we're going to have yeah. to rethink that because of the food insecurity within Kern County, that there should always be a very reliable market grocery type store with fresh food, produce, dairy, whatever. And that's very much needed, I think, as we go ahead and develop our community. So hats off to that. Yeah. We appreciate it. That's exactly you know, what we've done in a similar uh, town like Lost Hills. I know it's a little smaller, but uh, we brought a, uh, you know, an 18,000 square feet grocery store, brand new one. Uh, and then we've done something similar in uh, early March, you know. So those are smaller towns, and 
you know, with this one, I think we can uh, build a, a new one, you know, that's uh, more contemporary and it'll meet, uh, you know, all, uh, all what the city is looking for, hopefully. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else uh, for a comment on this item before I close in? Or, okay. Closing public comment. You want to add something, Paul? I, I guess I was just going to uh, uh, close the comments by um, uh, thanking the commission for the opportunity to um, to present this uh, annexation proposal. Um, again, the the mix of commercial as well as the different levels of housing from from uh, entry level uh, rentals. Um, first-time home buyers all the way to estate-sized lots is really going to be a, a very a good and unique product for the city of McFarland. We appreciate your support this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saldana. Uh, I'm going to open it up to for the commissioners. Any questions, concerns before I, I ask for more? You want to make the motion? Um, I just want – I'm going to make the motion, but uh, Mr. Couch. Uh, I just want to add that uh, with, with the staff, and this is one issue that I, that I brought up to all the developers – that what they're going to bring to our community. Uh, it's no secret that in the city of McFarland, we lack commercial. It's a 96% residential for four. We need that revenue tax to for the essential services for our residents. And that's what uh, we've lacked. And that's why when a developer comes in now, they got to come in with water. They got to come in with the jobs. They got to bring in commercial because uh, it doesn't offset the city cost. Um, when, and that's why it's so important to partner up with developers that are going to bring the, the resources that we need for our community. Because a lot of developers, no main names mentioned, but they, they build homes and they go away after that. We, we end up with the bill. But um, with that, I just want to see we have a motion to approve the modification recommendation by Mr. Knox. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. We have a, we have a, I have a, a motion by the chair and second by Commissioner Couch. May I have a roll call, please? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to, oh, go ahead, Ms. Ms. Fowler. I just want to say how pleased I am with 100% consent, 100% uh, homeowner in, uh, approval. That is a great way to go. Thank you, Ms. Fowler. Okay, uh, moving on to item number nine, commissioner items, uh, vice chair, Mr. Knox. Yeah, the vice chair of the commission is currently vacant. The vacancy is not typically an issue unless the chair is unavailable and there's a need to step in to run the meetings. The vice chair is also historically the next in line to be chair. It is not required, but the commission has a tradition of rotating the chair between the different categories of commissioners from city to county to special district to public and back to city. With this process, the next in line is the county, and I have discussed this both with, uh, with both, su both supervisors, and Commissioner Couch has been volunteered by Commissioner Flores to place his name and a, a nomination. <laughs> While this tradition has generally worked for the commission, anyone who has a burning desire to be the next chair is welcome to place their name and a nomination. And with that, I do not have a recommendation, and I turn it back to the chair. Okay. Do we have any public comment regarding this, uh, the nomination for the vice chair? Seeing none, do I have a, any I nominate, I nominate Supervisor Flores for vice chair. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> okay. We have a first and a second. Uh, <laughs> by Commissioner Cow, second by Commissioner Bruin. May I have a roll call, Madam Clerk? Oh, first, hold on. What, Do we have any what, what commissioners? Exa what exactly is the motion? Uh, huh? What exactly is the motion? No, that's what I was uh, <laughs> to, to nominate. Mr. Flores is vice chair. Uh, yes. And just to clarify, the, the county is next in the rotation? Yeah. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. Hold on. Do I have any uh, commissioner questions or concerns re regarding the nomination? Seeing none. So we have a first and a second. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item number 10, general business approval of monthly expense list number 24-08. Um, do you have any um, commissioner questions or concerns? Seeing none. Um, do I have a motion to approve the, the monthly expense? Motion, Fowler. Second, Clark. Motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Clark. And our clerk, may I have a, a roll call, please? To approve. Commissioner Ayala? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yep. Commissioner Fa uh, Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item B, City of Bakersfield, County of Kern Regional Housing Agreement Letter. Uh, Mr. Knox, I know this is uh, informational only, so. It is. At the last commission meeting, I mentioned that several annexations by the City of Bakersfield have been delayed due to a conflict with the County of Kern over areas needed by each to meet the arena requirements. With the letter provided in your packet, it appears that agreement has been reached and we should have several city annexations before the commission shortly. Sure. Uh, good evening, Gary Hallen, uh, City of Bakersfield Assistant City Manager. Um, th this has been a um, interesting process uh, to go through this. We'll just <laughs> call it that and call it good. Um, we have uh, kind of agreed to pull out uh, several parcels um, that, that uh, are listed in that letter. The county's also agreed to pull out some of their parcels so we can move forward. We are delaying uh, four annexations of the eight annexations, so we'll be moving forward with uh, the four large annexations that really uh, get at our uh, regional housing needs assessment. Um, the, these, um, and, and you've had presentations here at this uh, commission by our uh, development services director, but this is really the heart of the issue is that, that both county and city has a responsibility of setting aside, not building, setting aside zoned areas of either future city or current city that can uh, meet the housing numbers that the state has allocated to us through the COG. So they gave those regional numbers to the COG, the COG allocated them out to the different cities, and Bakersfield has the largest um, allocation. So uh, with that, we, we needed to move forward with these annexations. Um, we can now move forward with these annexations uh, because our uh, dealing with uh, housing, uh, the state housing community development uh, department who approves our housing element, each of our letters both respectively from the counties, a letter from HCD and the city's letter from HCD both said, look, you have conflicts, you need to resolve them. We were hoping that HCD would take the heavy hand as they normally do and just resolve them for us, but they didn't. They said you need to work it out amongst yourself, um, uh, which is fine, and we did, and this is how we've uh, decided to move forward. Um, so you will see uh, three very large annexations and one island annexation. I think that's the breakdown, right? Um, in the coming in the coming months to help us get across the finish line with our our housing element. There is also, and in, in, um, Mr. Knox mentioned in his letter to you, there is significant uh, housing dollars at stake if we don't get our housing element approved. So this is uh, a matter not only of doing what's right from a planning perspective and putting housing in the right place, but it's also making sure that we can have the resources to assist, again, we don't develop housing, to assist in building that future affordable housing because the, the city of Bakersfield has 76% of the entire county allocation of low and very low units, which is a heavy burden. I don't know if you can feel that from what my statement, <laughs> but it is a heavy burden that has been placed upon the city. So uh, we're, we're trying to, to meet the moment of that and we need dollars in order to do that. So I'm available to answer any questions uh, the commission has. Commissioners, do we have any questions, concerns? Mr. Zaragoza. Um, good to hear that that was settled or semi-settled. I'm, I'm glad that uh, there's been some cooperation on both parties. <clears throat> Um, I'm coming from a planner who used to work for the county and the city. 
Um, and I've been attending a good portion of your Bakersfield General Plan update, the 2045. Kudos to the staff. They've been doing a good job for civic engagement. Um, and this is questioning that I have is relative to housing in particular. Um, there's different ways to meet your goals. One of them, obviously, is to annex property that could be already pre-zoned for housing, residential. The other goal, or other avenue, I would imagine, is to increase your density on vacant parcels and perhaps do a zone change. Is the general plan update going to include zone changes, low-income housing incentives, and when will your general plan your housing element more or less be a, submitted to the state for approval. Three questions. So yeah, I'm, he I'm hearing all three and I'll try to answer them in, in that, uh, or actually I'm gonna go reverse order. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, that's just how I roll, right? So um, we plan to submit a, uh, our, our hopefully last round of HCD review uh, to HCD by the end of this year. Uh, beginning of next year. I believe that's the, the latest timeline that I've received from our development services department. With that, we hope that now that we've got some of this uh, conflict resolved, and th it's not just this, by the way, there's other um, concerns that we're trying to address in the housing element that uh, have been expressed. Um, and so this is, this is one, but we've got seven other pages that HCD has sent us to uh, try to work on and work through over the next several months. So the plan is to submit housing element. The state has 60 days to review and approve. So hopefully in early um, 25, we will get an approved housing element uh, for from the uh, state HCD, which I believe uh, the county's on the same timeline. They're in their third review and, and they're uh, gonna submit around the same time. Um, the other question of is um, housing uh, and rezoning. Part of our housing element was to rezone portions of the city. In fact, we, we've had two large rezonings, one an equivalent of about 900 acres of what's currently within the city and another 400 acres. It's two kind of different tranches of rezoning. Um, when we w when we initially went out, we heard feedback from existing property owners to say, no, we're not happy with that rezoning, and re redacted and retracted some of those parcels, and then went back out with a smaller rezone of 400. Um, and so it's an interim process, right? We're, we're trying every and all avenue that we can take. So not only annexations, current rezoning, and then remind me of your, your third The last question. one has to do with... Uh, perhaps uh, density bonuses or low-income housing incentives to encourage that type of development <clears throat> to meet your goals. Right, so, so the city has um, uh, funds designated not only through um, some of the funds that we receive from HCD as, as part of our housing trust fund, we have HUD funds, and we also have uh, our Measure N PSVS funding, all, all going into the pot of uh, trying to incentivize uh, low uh, to very low income housing. We, we do an annual RFP, our uh, Economic and Development uh, Department, Community Development Department does an RFP to, to request different uh, projects. Again, we're not the builder of the housing. I, if I can emphasize that anymore, I, I would, uh, <laughs> but we, we encourage and we help and assist uh, developers who want to do that. And we, we, we do offer um, gap financing. We can't finance all of those projects. I, I think another layer to this, and I'm, and I'm only focused on the dollars that we receive directly, but there's indirect dollars that come from state funds when you go after tax credit projects, right? So, so the, the state has um, tax credit financing, either 4% or 9% or projects. Those infuse tens of millions of dollars uh, of, of state uh, an investment into those projects, which the, typically they're sizable projects. They're 80, 90, 100 unit projects um, at a pop. We try to do three or four of those a year, and those are you know tens, 20, 20 million dollar investment of tax credits that are all through the federal government via the state. And so we're precluded from doing it in those projects until we get a housing element. So it's not just the funds that come directly to us from HCD, but it's any of these ancillary projects that HC HCD will ultimately be a funder on. 
we've got to cross the finish line. So uh, there's definitely a lot at stake uh, with that. Good, good explanation, Gary. I think what I'm seeing from the city of McFarland is maybe an example of, of a approach which is more of a big picture approach when you do a large development, look at mixed use, mixed income, just not all commercial, not all retail, but put it in housing as well as different levels and have that all as a package or requirement up front when a developer says, I want to develop in the city of Bakersfield. Right. Because if not, <laughs> they're going to pick and choose which developments they want to do and uh, may not be to your benefit as far as meeting the housing goals if they do that. So I'm just kind of giving you a, a heads up what I've seen, especially in the Central Valley. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I think I also didn't answer your question fully. So let me go back to um, par part of that is in, in the housing element process, we've created new land use districts or new zoning designations. We now have an R6, which you know is 70 units to the acre. Um, we want dense housing. We think there can be much more dense housing here in downtown. We think there's, there's definitely um, opportunity there. Can it be financed? Is it, is it feasible? We'll let the market determine that, again, because they build housing. Um, and so, but we want to give them an envelope, give them a playing field to play in, and uh, and we, we're trying to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more que uh, questions, concerns? Seeing none, thank you so much for the information. Moving on to C, request for signature SB 1209 Cortese and identification. Uh, Officer Knox? Yes. From time to time, LAFCO is individually, LAFCO is individually weigh in on legislative matters. We have been asked specifically by LA LAFCO to weigh in on SB 1209, which currently sits on the governor's desk awaiting his signature. For those of you who haven't been around a while, you might, uh, the San Luis Obispo LAFCO was sued over their use of an indemnification agreement that required the applicant to indemnify slow LAFCO against it, all lawsuits, including by the applicant themselves. The bill originally written to was written to provide LAFCOs with the authority to, to apply indemnification agreements similar to the authority granted to cities and counties. While I had some issues with the bill, it wasn't going to affect our current indemnification agreement. At the end of the session, there was some pushback on the bill and amendments were added. One in particular caught my attention, a section that reads, LAFCO must fully cooperate in the defense. When asked, LA LAFCO indicated that the language was to ensure that LAFCOs don't hinder the gathering of an administrative record. I believe it can also be interpreted to mean that LAFCO has to go along with a defense strategy if, of the applicant, even if it's detrimental to LAFCO. As such, I have modified the draft letter provided by LA LAFCO to address these concerns with the governor. It is my recommendation to approve as written. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment regarding this item? Seeing none, no. any commissioner comments or questions? I just wanted to clarify something. Go ahead, Mr. Segoles. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know if this is a uh, executive officer question or a legal question. Uh, first of all, I think your letter is well written. You know, I had a kind of a, like, it's a really rookie, rookie question. If in 2022, the Second District Court of Appeals determined that LAFCO, um, despite, despite pre prevailing in the underlying court case, could not require or rely upon identification because it is not expressly authorized in the Cortese Knox Hurstburg Local Government Act of 2000. Are we in limbo or can we still request that as an indemnification, which obviously we just did with the big fall in annexation? You cannot do what the court said in San Luis Obispo you couldn't do. This doesn't change that. It just opened up the possibility that there was no specific, specific statute allowing LAFCO to get indemnification agreements from their applicants. This changes that. Mr. Knox reviewed that legislation. I recommended to, to approve it. He pointed out something that was really um, defective about it, and I hadn't picked up on that. He then talked to the other LAFCO people about it. Um, 
decide and, and talk to Mr. Cortese, I think. Did you not? Or I, di I did not. Or the somebody in the uh, legislation part of it who clarified it for him in writing, and he's got that in his letter. So uh, we can now uh, legally, we are always doing it legally, but now it's specific that we can require indemnification agreements, and he's clarified the, the defective language. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns from the commissioners? Go ahead, Ms. Fowler. I'm interested. There are LAFCOs who were not, did not have an indemnification agreement? Correct. Okay. And others who use them uh, in a way that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If the applicant has to be, has to indemnify LAFCO ag against the applicant, mm -hmm. which is what happened in, in San Luis Obispo, um, there's, that doesn't, I mean, that's great from LAFCO's perspective because now we have no no problems whatsoever. Right. We're, we're always going to be taken care of, but it's just wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if we're doing something wrong as a LAFCO, someone should be able to sue us for it if it's based on what we've done. Mm -hmm. the, indem the indemnification agreement is based on the fact that almost all our information comes from the applicant themselves. Right. And so that that's why it's import we, important that we have this agreement put together is because we are relying on the information that that's given to us. We're not generating it ourselves. Well, hat tip to you for discovering that inadequacy. Um, and great, good job. I'll make a motion to approve the letter if there are no other comments. I second it, Commissioner Zaragoza. Motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Zaragoza. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Arnold? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to the LAFCO website. Mr. Knox, report. Last week, www.kernlafco.org went live. Anyone going to our previous web page on the county site will be redirected to the home page on the new site. We will continue to make improvements and are looking forward to rivaling Google on the amount of traffic generated <laughs> by our website. And I looked it up and Google generates 131 billion uh, hits per month. That's unbelievable. But we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get close. We're closing the gap. Yes. <laughs> and that's my report. Okay. Any commissioner questions, comments regarding the website? Seeing none, there's no motion. It's an informational. Moving on to e, uh, your report, Mr. Knox. Yeah. In an effort to bring more flexibility and understanding, Ms. Menchaca has, uh, is processing her first annexation. It's a simple city annexation, but will help our staff understand our processes more accurately and provide more, more flexibility if Mr. Rice is ever un unavailable. So uh, that's been a goal of ours to do more cross training and this is one of the ways that we're doing it. At the last meeting, I provided a letter to the grand jury on the issues with Inyo Kern CSD. Since, uh, since that time, there have been additional water outages. I've been informed as of last week that GM and the board chair have both resigned. And at this point, I'm waiting uh, for the state water board to decide whether to temporarily operate the district. If the state, state, if the state does take over, I will work with them to pay for a study required to determine whether consolidation will be required. If the state does not come in, I will likely come back to the commission with other options to consider sometime in the future. Inyo Kern is not the only district with major issues. Several months ago, Kern Valley Cemetery District Board of Directors fired their GM and, and found that many problems, including lack of financial accountability and noncompliance with many laws and regulations. In, impressively, other cemetery districts have come in to provide assistance and support, including Danny Brown, who runs both South Kern and Tehachapi Cemetery Districts, and Tim Unruh, who is a retired GM for the Shafter Wasco Cemetery District. I recently discussed the district's progress with Mr. Unruh, who gave a farewell report of the district's progress. So that's good, good news. We have started the audit of the 2023-24 fiscal year. 
Our books have been closed by our accounting firm. Some commissioners have been contacted by auditing firm, our, auditing, our auditing firm, Brown Armstrong. Uh, we do not expect any major findings, but always am open to ways we can perform our accounting better. Uh, for those of you going to the Calafco conference next month, remember that the October commission uh, meeting overlaps with the first day of the conference. Uh, we will likely have several important items next month, so please make arrangements to head that way after the meeting or early on Thursday morning. And it's at Tanaya Lodge, in case you were wondering. Uh, last week I was at the CSDA conference. Uh, got quite a bit of education, a good time with Commissioners McKibben and Commissioners Clark. Thank you both. Um, during the commission, the, the conference, I focus on the basics of CEQA, Brown Act, and CalPERS. And uh, seems like I, I have a pretty good grasp of those if I, if I hear the experts. So I'm, I was happy to, to, to come, come out of that conference feeling, feeling uh, that I have a good understanding of those issues. Lastly, uh, the current lease on our office space expired at the end of May. I had a verbal agreement with our property management to continue operating under the terms of the previous lease on a month-to-month -month basis. That changed on Tuesday as we were provided notice that without a current lease, there would be an increase in monthly rent from $3,511 to $4,667 per month and what was called a holdover, which is included in the previous lease. This afternoon, I sat down with a landowner and came to an understanding to have a six-month lease with the same terms of what was originally proposed in the five-year lease agreement that was never finalized. There uh, wasn't time to write up the agreement this afternoon and it wasn't agendized, so I'll be bringing back to the commission uh, on the October meeting. And lastly, our October meeting is on the 16th. Okay. Do we have any questions uh, regarding uh, Mr. Knox's report? I got one. Go ahead, Mr. Pichicola. Are you going to be here on the 16th? I will be in the Tanaya Lodge on the 16th. I'm actually not going. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Rice is going, and I believe Commissioner Clark, and who else is? Oh, yeah. Is there still Great. time to do that, by the way? Or is, it, is it over? Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Okay, moving on to <coughs> item 11, uh, Officer Knox, do we have any uh, closed session items? Uh, there, there has not been any reportable progress on that item, so we don't need to go into closed session tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, so our next scheduled meeting is up for October 16, 2024. Do I have mo a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Clark. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Meeting adjourned at 6.04. Everybody have a safe trip home. Thank you for attending.